to think that a man who started as a draft door boy down the mine could look around at his community and think this is wrong and this needs to change and to have the kind of will to go all the way to becoming the man who, who kind of made the NHS happen. <laughs> it really gets to me just, uh, just thinking about that. Most young people particularly, unless you've been born and brought up in Wales, don't really have any idea uh, about him. Somebody asked me earlier today, well, what's this play nymph that you're doing? You go, okay, where do we start? You know, yeah. <laughs> Growing up in Wales, there are certain things that are just sort of part of your DNA. Things like, you know, male voice choirs, they push lots of buttons for you as, as being a Welsh person. Dylan Thomas is another one, and a Nairn Bevan is another one. For something that is so beloved and so respected, and a man who has cast such a large shadow, you would think that there would be a proliferation of yeah. films, and, but there's not. And presumably that is because it's just so complicated, so difficult to know, well, how do you tell this story? Tim Price, the writer, has been working on it for 10 years, and he first showed it to me probably five or six years ago. And so we've gone through drafts and drafts. And I think Tim's initial idea and, and real stroke of genius is to go, rather than just do the biopic, let's take one moment and extrapolate out of that all, all of the story of what he did and his life is told through a man under morphine dealing with dreams and ghouls. We went down to uh, Tredegan, didn't we, and to the Pushmaur, the big pit. Yeah. Yeah, so we that went, was amazing, went, went down it? a pit, went, w went, walked on the hills that Nye used to practice his speeches on and went to all the, all the key places, many of which are referred to in the, in the play. Being down there, I suppose I was just really struck by what it took for him to do what he did. I think it's fantastic that the 100th NT Live is a story of such resonance. The other day we had, um, the show had to stop because somebody was taken ill and the, you know, the glorious question, is there a doctor in the house? Then immediately 12 or 15 people sprung up around the, the auditorium and one of our cast, who is also a doctor, tried to get through the curtain. All of us have benefited from it, have been affected by it, or have been let down by the underfunding of it. And internationally, I think it's, it, it, it is an area where, where this country has done something right. It's a story and a play that seems to really bring people together. Everyone has an experience. Everyone has something that they can relate to in it. And to be able to take that out and make it totally accessible to people, I think is brilliant. And particularly at, a, at, a, at this moment in time as well, where the values that underpin what the vision of the NHS came out of need to be remembered again and there needs to be a reimagining of some kind to have the boldness and the audacity that Bevan had. We all take it for granted. It's just a thing, it's always been there. It hasn't always been there. It's really important to, to um, give the audience an understanding of what it was like before and what it will be like again if we let it die. The more we can have that national conversation, the better, and, and this is a wonderful vessel for that. I do love the idea that there are people, you know, friends of mine, family members, who uh, just can't come here and won't be able to go to the Millennium Centre, and they will be able to go to a cinema and watch it. I think that's wonderful. I'm thrilled that this is the 100th. I look forward enormously to uh, to shooting it and to, you know, getting it out over the country and, and it will be fascinating to see what the international response is to it.